you know, all the dysfunction that follows, substance abuse and so on. It's, a, it's an incredible problem. Everything we are is due to our brain. And when you have brain dysfunction, you lose who you are. And this therapy is restoring their lives, their self, what they are, their uh, individuality. I, there's nothing like it. It's, it's very exciting. And his initial findings have been very encouraging. In a presentation to a medical association in March, Harsh reported that 80% of those treated returned to their normal lives. Also, there was an average 15% increase in IQ. There was a nearly 40% decrease in post-concussion syndrome symptoms like headaches, loss of memory and depression, and an almost 30% reduction in PTSD symptoms. How you doing? Good. Great. Matthew and Margot both came here to Harch's clinic in Marrero, Louisiana on their own. The first step is a video assessment. Margot, usually effusive and engaging, seems dazed. Yeah. You've been depressed? Yeah. Depressed. Okay. My life is spent on the couch. I have severe headaches um, at least twice a week. And I have severe PTSD. Um, I have memory loss. Memory loss, headaches, headaches. okay. Uh, all right. Um, any problems thinking? Thinking. Um. People who are very uh, engaging and people-oriented become reclusive. Uh, um, avoidance. They stay indoors. They don't want to interact with people. Uh, it's just a total change. And Matt, when asked to simply stand still with his eyes closed, cannot. Margot and Matt's treatment consisted of 41-hour sessions in a hyperbaric chamber, twice a day, 20 days. The treatment is painless. The patient simply relaxes in the chamber. When she first got to Louisiana, Margot's migraines were so intense, a gentle breeze on her face could trigger a headache. A month and 40 visits to the hyperbaric chamber, and she says the results are dramatic. I think I'm communicating better with people. I'm keeping up in conversations. Um, my headaches, they're still there, but the intensity of them are down. And um, my family has noticed in my emails that I'm writing better. On top of this, Margot's memory may be returning, slowly. She passed a word association test getting every question right it was a quiz she had failed miserably just a month before. And I called my dad right after the treatment, and I was just like, Dad, oh my God, it worked. It was wonderful. But not everyone is a believer. For years, the Army and VA refused to try the oxygen treatment, saying it is an unproven science. They come back, they've got their, these injuries. You tell them you can help them. What's the Army saying? The Army, the, the military in general, uh, have been very negative about it. Why? Uh, they've told us it's illegal what I'm doing. They have, uh, there's been a fair amount of obstruction, uh, uh, discrediting statements, um, uh, threats. Right here we have two buildings and we have um, a interdisciplinary uh, approach where we have all kinds of specialists that are together that are ju just here to treat soldiers with traumatic brain injury. This whole complex is for TBI. That's, that's correct. As a director of clinical brain injury research at Evans Army Hospital at Fort Carson, Colorado, Dr. Heidi Terrio has seen 8,000 soldiers come through her office with TBI. In 2005, we uh, first began screening, and at that time we discovered there was a, a, a brigade that had 23% of the soldiers had sustained a traumatic brain injury. Up until now, Army hospitals, like Evans, have been treating soldiers with TBI with a combination of physical therapy and drugs. They've even experimented using a Wii game console. 
but they had steadfastly refused to experiment with hyperbaric oxygen. But Congress took notice of Harch's research and is now forcing the Army to begin clinical trials, treating soldiers suffering from TBI with HBOT. Army Surgeon General Eric Schoomaker told World Report that, quote, without scientific, evidence-based data to support current claims, it would be inappropriate to pursue hyperbaric oxygen as a viable treatment option for soldiers suffering chronic symptoms from brain injury. Because of its expense and labor intensity, it would also be an inappropriate application of critical resources better used for evidence-based approaches. Harch says the studies are out there, but he believes the Army's medical establishment isn't open to new approaches. This challenges a uh, hundred years of neurological dogma. You're not supposed to be able to do anything for a brain injury. By the end of this year, Evans Hospital at Fort Carson, along with four other Army hospitals, will participate in a double-blind clinical trial using hyperbaric oxygen on about 300 brain-injured soldiers. Being disabled uh, is expensive, so if we can recover uh, these folks, it, would, it may end up panning out that, uh, that it'll be less expensive to, to treat them and, and uh, make them have a full life. And there's always ways to improve, and there's always ways to make processes better. So, um, you know, constant improvement, um, continuous process improvement, making sure that, you know, you're always trying to fight for making it better for them. What's going to make you satisfied? I'll never be satisfied. We need to keep on striving to make sure that there's treatments for them. Dr. Terrio is crossing her fingers hyperbaric oxygen is the cure Dr. Harch says it is and not a placebo which fools her soldiers into thinking they are better when they're actually not. Well, I think it's promising. Do I think it's going to be the silver bullet? We don't know. And uh, so there's other interventions that are going on as well. I'm hoping it works, but uh, we'll see. It's, it, I don't have a bias one way or the other. Uh, we'll just have to let the science sort it out. Harch argues that hyperbaric chambers should be brought into the battlefield so soldiers who are hit with explosions can be treated right away. The dream would be to get this in theater right there and start treating it. The, the evidence is there for a treatment of acute severe traumatic brain injury. And it's been shown now in multiple studies, you can reduce mortality by 60% with just a few of these treatments. But a skeptical military is not close to doing that. After all, they're just beginning to experiment with HBOT and these trials will go until at least 2012. Coming up, you ready? All right. This is Matt Williams' last of 40 HBOT treatments. Dr. Harch would like to see him rest up a month and then receive 40 more. After his 40 treatments, Matt says he is less forgetful and his headaches are improving. But he is still struggling. In fact, he's moved to a remote family retreat where he's doing odd jobs in an attempt to stay busy. For Margot, the HBOT treatments have given her a new lease on life. And when you first got here, were you skeptical? Or what, what was your mood? I was definitely skeptical. I mean, I've, I've been through brain surgery, oxygen. How's that gonna help? <laughs> but I'm a believer. <laughs> Today, Margot will fly home to Ohio to see her husband, Brian, who is waiting late in an empty airport. Her life's been miserable since she got hurt. She hasn't been able to do anything. Uh, before, you know, she was very rambunctious, you know, excited, ran around all the time, and then ever she just got hurt, she sat on the couch, couldn't do anything. I would have to carry her upstairs because she was in so much pain. Uh, it was terrible. Hopefully it will be a lot different the way it used to be. Brian isn't yet convinced that the oxygen treatments have cured his wife. The headaches are almost gone, but she still has trouble with her memory. He still finishes some of her sentences. There will likely be lots more hours in the oxygen tank ahead. But for the first time in a long time, Brian and Margot have a chance to live a normal life.